so today we're going to be um, making a Earl Grey inspired tea with um, it's a, an essential oil and a fragrance oil blend um, that I have custom formulated. And it's going to be um, two layers, so I'm going to be making two separate batches of soap. The first batch is actually going to be quite a change for us because there's no goat's milk in this section, this part of the soap. Um, we are actually using a lye solution that is um, totally um, Earl Grey tea. I actually steeped the tea, then frozen into cubes, and then to, so that it keeps the fumes down and it really actually smells so much like Earl Grey tea. So this layer is going to have just the um, Earl Grey tea as our um, liquid portion mixed with our lye. We're gonna go ahead and add that and you can see that right here as it's quite brown compared to what our usual creamy goat's milk is. And we're gonna run that through the strainer just to make sure there's no undissolved lye or anything in there. But I used an organic Earl Grey tea that is actually, this is very much my favorite. I love tea of any kind, except for green tea. I'm not a huge green tea fan, but any kind of black tea, I'm all over it. Earl Grey is by far, however, my favorite. And this one is an organic Earl Grey, and I will leave a link down in the description box for the Earl Grey that I get. I get it off of Amazon. Sometimes you can find it in natural grocery stores too, if you wanna go look. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get this blended up. And that has given us such a pretty color. It really looks, I know you can't really tell here, but it is really a nice, really tea, tea color. All right, so now I'm going to add some of the Earl Grey tea leaves that I have ground up in my grinder. And we'll just get those blended in by hand because they're already pretty fine, so I don't want to get them any finer than they are already. And this is, it is, smells so good already just without anything added to it. It has a nice tea smell. It's kind of fun actually making soap without goat's milk. I haven't done that in a really long time. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and add our fragrance oil portion, which this is actually the the fragrance oil portion is bergamot black tea from Brambleberry. And I'm saving some of this because I need it for the top of the soap. And this is my essential oil blend. I really didn't think the, the bergamot black tea fragrance smelled very much like old gray tea smells to me smelled more floral and I get a lot of the citrus notes out of an Earl Grey tea but citrus fragrances essential oils tend to fade some so maybe that is why they went with the more floral direction but I don't know all right so that's why I had to add some essential oils to up the actual Earl Grey smell and we're going to divide this between our two brambleberry molds And then the second batch, the second half, is going to be our goat's milk portion. And then we're gonna have, it's gonna be colored with some swirls. So, really cool looking when it's finished, I think. 
I hope, anyway. All right. So we're gonna let this sit, and I'm gonna go ahead while I'm waiting for this to set, and go ahead and whip up the other batch. All right, now this is our goat's milk portion. Just our goat's milk and lye solution is already strained up and in here, so I'm gonna blend this up. <laughs> So we're gonna separate this off. We're gonna separate a little bit off into another container, which is going to have our gray por portion. And this gray is, hold on a second, it's from Rustic Essentials, or not Rustic Essentials, it's from Nurture Soap. And it is neutral gray. I'll blend this one a little bit by hand and then we'll add the fragrance oil in a minute. And the other portion is really good. Out of the bottle, I didn't think this had a lot of, the, the bergamot tea had a lot of florals, but, or it had a lot of oral gray, but I think a lot of, some of it is coming out now. So that's good. And this is Purple Galaxy Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus, Crafter's Choice. titanium dioxide and kind of lighten this up a little bit. All right, let's add some of the TD and see how that helps. Did it quite a bit. That purple was quite a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. I've never used that one before. I'm going to blend this up and get it all incorporated. <laughs> much better that's much more of the color than I was going for so now we're gonna add our fragrance oil and our essential oil blend and I'll just blend that in with our spatula and I can kind of make myself an excuse for why I was using way too much color in there Oh my gosh, I have new puppy brain. I had no idea. I, I think I had a eight, we had an eight week old Pekingese when I was in college that I took care of, but at 19 years old, I had a lot more energy to take care of an eight week old puppy than I do at, well, however old I am. But it's been a long time. Anyway. But she is so cute. I'll leave a picture of her at the end here for you to see. She is a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. So cute. But she is definitely wearing me out. Just giving me a run for my money. We're trying to do all of our training. We're really training her. She's going to be a farm dog, so she needs to be well trained. And training takes a lot of work with an eight-week-old eight week puppy. But she's been doing really good. It just takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. All right, so that's all good and blended up. 
uh, should I do the end of pot or not? I don't know. I think I will. You know what? I kind of forgot. I need a little bit of this for the top. So if I do it in the pot, I'm going to separate a little bit of this off back over here for the tops. And it's okay if the top is a little darker, that'll look cool. Anywho. But she's doing so good. We've already taught her. We've had her um, a week yesterday. We picked her up and she already knows how to sit. She knows a couple more tricks and she's doing pretty good on her potty training which has been a little difficult trying to figure out how to do that with such a big house and having to be outside a lot. But we've watched a lot of YouTube videos on puppy training before we got her before, of course, and now too, just to try to figure some stuff out because we didn't know what it was going to be like specifically. We are a crate training her. And she's doing really well at night, which is a huge blessing. There was only a couple days where I didn't sleep very long. All right, so let's get this poured off. And I did go ahead and, uh, as you can see, I textured the top of this one because it was going to be a while. And I wanted this to get fully, like, incorporated so they would stick together. So I went ahead and textured the top on this one. All right, so I'm gonna scrape this off into another container and then I'm gonna come back. We're gonna let this sit for a minute or two since that was so fluid, that second layer there. Oh goodness, oh my gosh. Anyway, I will get that cleaned up too. <laughs> and we'll be back after I let this sit. Obviously, it's really, really liquidy. And we'll texture the top. All right, so we let this set up about five minutes or so, maybe not that long, I don't know. I get a little impatient, but I think it's good and firmed up now. We're gonna just add what we have left over here to the top. And I also get impatient because I have one of my kids, well, adults, they are my kids, watching my puppy right now. She's going to be my dog, so I really wanted her to spend most of her time with me and Scott, because she's our empty nest dog. So my youngest finally has, gets to be a big sister. <laughs> I'm just kidding, she's a dog, and she's gonna be our farm help to help me with the goats. Hoping to teach her how to herd, so we'll see how that goes. Never done that before, but that's what she's supposed to do. Goats are not really that accustomed to being herded. I don't think it's something that they enjoy very much, but we'll see if we can, we'll see if we can get them to let her do it. We haven't really introduced them. She went out to look at them. And she wasn't afraid of them, which is good. And they really weren't that intimidated by her yet because she's tiny, but we'll see how it goes. We're doing a lot of research on how to do that. And I have a friend who 
transporter collies, so I'm hoping that she'll be able to help us out a little bit too. But she raises sheep, not goats. Alrighty, so we're just gonna go with a spoon. I've been on here quite a while now. This is only the second time I've been able to get out here without the puppy. I've brought her out here, but she really can't be out here when I'm actually making soap unless I carry out her hen and everything, but it's been raining, so I haven't done that yet. I want her to like it out here, so and she wasn't too comfortable the first time. I don't know, it's probably a lot of the smells, bother her, I don't know. But we'll wait a little bit and we'll make it a fun thing for her to be out here. And she can be in her pen and be my little companion while I'm out here making soap by myself. Because all of my kids will be in college this fall. So I'll be by myself a lot during the day for the first time in like 23 years, 20, yeah, 23 years. So anyway, um, thus the new puppy. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we'll be back in about um, 18, 24 hours, depending on when I can get out here, when the puppy lets me leave, and we'll see what this looks like on the inside. Alrighty, so it hasn't been about, I think it's been about 16 hours. I made this one quite late last night, but um, the puppy is being good. So I wanted to take this opportunity. It's actually still a little soft. The second one, I'm not gonna be able to get out of the mold, but this one released from the mold pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and get it up and see how our Earl Grey tea looks like on the inside, how it turned out. Even though I didn't get to do, or I don't think I managed to do, I'm not sure that gray was gonna come out like I wanted it to. I wanted it to be kind of a, just a light contrast, but I think I got it a little too light. But it's still gonna look good. see some of the some of the gray layers in there the gray swirl which is kind of what I was going for I wanted a light violet with some darker gray swirls but I think the top turned out really cool and it just smells amazing it doesn't smell to me exactly like a cup of Earl Grey but it gets kind of close it gets very close and this portion with the without the goat's milk that was a pretty decent swirl with the Earl Grey tea mixed in, and then we use the Earl Grey, Earl Grey tea as our water portion. And it was really cool. It looks it really smells like it smells amazing. This one's definitely a keeper. We'll have to come back to it at some point. This one is also part of our August soap release. Mostly doing kind of like sweet treats, bakery items. But I thought that seeing as at our house, nothing goes quite so well as a cup of tea with dessert. We wanted to throw this in and since Earl Grey is my personal favorite, black tea. And I've always wanted to do an Earl Grey. I've also I want to do a chai. Chai is probably 
In the winter, it's my favorite. I just love all of the chai, all of the spices in chai. It's so warming. It's literally warming. All of the good stuff that's in chai. But Earl Grey is good iced. It's good with a grain-free, sugar-free scone. If that's how you eat at your house like we do. Or like we do now. Getting back to it. I spent four years on a grain-free diet. I kind of got off track for a little while while during our move and all the subsequent stressful times of moving and kind of getting into those easy to make foods again. And then getting our property cleared for everything that we want to do. But anyway, just excuses. We were just lazy. But now we're getting back on the wagon and we've been doing really good. It helps to do a lot of meal prep and everything. Batch cooking when you have five people, five adults. And you're very busy. So that is what the plan is. I'm kind of surprised the layers didn't come out a little bit better. I think this one, you can kind of see it, the little, the texturing on that top. Thought it would be a little bit more noticeable, but it's still good and everything is nicely connected even though I made the soaps about an hour or so apart. So this will be on our website on August 30th and you can pick up the bar and we do want to thank you for watching and if you like this video please hit the like button and if you can consider subscribing we would really appreciate it. We love sharing things with you. If you'd like to see some videos about um, our grain free, sugar free cooking to see us do some batch cooking I was kind of considering doing something like that see how we prep our meals for the week. If you'd be interested, let me know in the comments. But thank you so much for watching and we will catch you later.